Hi there! Today, in this video, we will restore an old but nevertheless very good power supply from HP Ageland k side model E3632A. This device, as it often happens, fell into my hands in the as is state. After a small investigation, I discovered that the aging process of radio elements was not the biggest problem. A team of highly qualified specialists have done their best to destroy the poor device. Now, meet two theorist representatives of the genus Homo Idiocratius, who seem to be responsible for planning of repair and restoration work of this power supply. Regarding the embodiment of the idea and the hardware, it was presumably performed by their worker with the appropriate tool, and eventually the power supply has begun to look like this. I'm starting the restoration from disassembly of the power supply. Removing the bumpers of the front and back panels, unscrewing the fastening screws on the side walls and on the carrying handle. This will release the cover. Then unscrew the four Torx screws on the back panel and remove the panel. Unscrew the four screws on the sides of the front panel and remove the panel also. Disconnect all wires leading to a transformer and to the fan from the board. Two screws securing the main board are being unscrewed from the bottom. and remove the PCB. As you can see, the PCB itself is quite dirty. The main problem is the ditch terminal block. It can be replaced with this original. I don't need the old terminal block, so I'll remove it in a such a barbaric way, because I don't want to damage the main PCB. At the next step of refinement, I'll perform recapping, namely replacement of all electrolytic capacitors, which are 11 pieces in total on the board. Of course, it would be possible to test all capacitors for ESR and determine which of them are alive and which are dead, but I don't believe in the existence of capacitors that can survive 30 years without losing its capacitance. By the way, this power supply unit is exactly 30 years old. So, the first thing I did was the removing of three large 1000 microfarad capacitors, which were blocking the ACEs to the screws, which fastened the transistors and diode bridges to the radiator. After that, the whole thing is sorted out, the remnants of thermal paste are removed, as well all, as all kinds of paleontological deposits of dust and dirt that have been there for 30 years. You can see the table of models and ratings of capacitors that replaced the regular ones on the screen now. After replacing the capacitors, everything was washed from the flux. A new thermal paste was applied under all installed on the radiators components. And the next step was the replacement of the old noisy fan with something new and more suitable. The process itself is primitive and intuitive. The old Peneflow fan itself is pretty good, but the age is taking its toll. Instead of it, an M8P and B multiframe fan was installed. Due to incompatibility of connectors, I had to install the old connector by crimping new contacts for it. 
After that, we will install the fan in place through the gaskets, not forgetting the old grill. We connect the wires to the board and install the board on the chassis, fixing it with two screws from the bottom. Now it's the turn of the front panel. The same great specialists that I already mentioned at the beginning of the video glued the front panel, smeared it with incomprehensible biological substances and for some reason managed to break the encoder handle mount. Naturally, first of all, we will wash the rubber bands of the buttons and replace the front panel with a new one. Setting up a PCB, it snaps into place by sliding to the side. After that, we will fix the encoder with its native nut and washer. The encoder knob will have to be replaced with a new one. You see its model number on the screen. After that, let's put things together. I will tie the wires with plastic straps and install the pusher of the power button and the front panel itself, also fixating the harness of its wires. Be careful with the chases, its edges are sharp and while working on the power supply I've cut my fingers with them several times. The next step is fixing of the front panel with four screws, two on the right and two on the left. After that I put on the casing and fix it with screws also. The back panel is being installed and fixed with four Torx screws. The rubber bumpers are being installed at the front and at the back. Do not forget to connect sensing and output terminals of the power supply together. The final touch – installing the side carrying handle. This is how the power supply looked before, and this is how it looks after the restoration. And of course, everything is working now. So, here we are coming to the end. Thanks for watching. 
subscribe to the channel, put likes, leave comments, ask questions. Bye!